went into our local pet store and I bought dog toys. But we're gonna use them for tortoises. Stick around so you can see why. Okay, I've got a really awesome little spread here of all kinds of goodies for our turtles and tortoises because what we're going to do today is not just feed them because that's an obvious thing we have to do having an animal facility. We're going to enrich their lives just a little bit more. Now inside for the winter where a lot of these exotic species have to come to wait out a few months before it gets warm enough for them to go back outside is when it's really crucial to do this. Outdoors, because we do everything in a natural manner, the animals can constantly graze, forage, hunt, use uneven terrains to get exercise reach for their food. They have to work for it much like the case would be in nature and that's what you really want to strive for. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these cool little dog toys. These are basically like Kongs. They can't pull them apart or take chunks out of them whatsoever. We're going to stuff them full of food and these will roll and as they roll food might fall out of it. The animals might be able to pull things from it and then we're also going to hang them because tortoises should not always eat off the ground. They reach for things in nature and especially in the case of the giant tortoises like Galapagos and Aldabras, it's important that they reach so that they don't suffer unnecessary muscle atrophy. So let's start with this cool green ball right here and I'm going to pack it full of organic dandelions. So what this does is it simulates grazing behavior because the animals will continuously work for it and because the ball will move, they move with the ball much like they would do in nature because they're not just sitting in one spot and eating it to the ground all the time. They're walking around eating a little bit of this, eating a little bit of that, reaching for this, grabbing for that, and that's what we're gonna to try to simulate here. And this also is good for a variety of senses. It's not just for smell, but it's also for sight. And there's different textures going on here. And again, that exercise is so important. A lot of people don't realize that Turtles and tortoises are on the move, folks. Sure, they spend a good amount of their time being inactive as they stay hidden to avoid things like extreme heat or even extreme cold, and of course, predation. But man, when they wanna get going, we've already shown you, they can move. And that's what we want. Just because it's winter doesn't mean our shelled friends can't have a good time indoors as they wait for spring. So we're almost ready here. I'm gonna really pack this well, but I also wanna save some. <laughs> so now I can pull some out here, get some of the stalks out over here. And you don't have to just use dandelion. There's a variety of things you can do this with because variety is key. So one day you could stuff it full of dandelion, then uh, you could do branches from a hibiscus tree, or you could do mulberry tree branches with leaves really make them work for it. And then as they eat it all down, if they're not really getting much from it, you can go and pull more out and add some to it. All right, so we're gonna use the green toy more for our radiated tortoises and uh, the sulcata tortoises, I'm sure will join in on that. But this one, I'm purposely going to make for Mickey, our giant Aldabra tortoise, because we're gonna hang it. I really wanna see her reach for her food. The tortoise has such an amazing gait she stands tall, her stamina is incredible, and we wanna keep that going. So we wanna make sure she's always working for food because the giants really, really can become the lazy ones. And unfortunately, you will see them uh, in public facilities where they're kinda of just sitting around, uh, maybe can't walk very well. Any species of tortoise, any, should be able to effortlessly lift its entire body off the ground, no matter how big or heavy they are. That means you've got a healthy, muscular tortoise, and one that is not suffering any obvious health issues. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, so what we're gonna do here. There is Mickey, the giant tortoise. I am going to use this light bracket. I'm gonna use this light bracket, and I'm gonna attach it to the side of the hide here, and I'm gonna hang it uh, at a level that she can get to, but I, again, I want to see her work for it. This here, we need to 
screw gun. They want this to be sturdy. Because these are strong tortoises. And once they reach this and start pulling on it, you don't want anything to collapse. So let's see, what kind of height can we get with this? The tortoises are already curious. They're like, what you got, man? All I did here was use some old chains, just kind of put them together. Nothing needs to be fancy. Tortoises don't care about the way things look. It just needs to be functional. What do you think? Is that a good uh, height, Mick? Mickey's already reaching. Is she already reaching? Look at that, guys. This is exactly what I want. That's all for you, girl. Go ahead. Now, some people see this and they start to think, you know, why are you doing that to that animal? Why are you making the animal work for it? It's because it's healthy for them. In nature, nobody is going around and handing food off to them. Even though these are herbivorous animals and they don't actually have to really hunt for anything, they still have to work for it. So just because they're in a captive management situation doesn't mean that they should lose that instinct. They need to be able to exercise and practice all kinds of browsing, grazing, and foraging that they can because it's beneficial for them on so many levels. She will stay interested in this hanging ball of greens for I don't even know how long, but it's gonna keep her going. But see, a piece has fallen here, and the radiated tortoise is helping itself to it. Go ahead, Mickey, look. So this is a good time to point out the different anatomical features of the different species right in front of you. You've got the radiated tortoise, the sulcata tortoise, and the aldabra tortoise. And the aldabra tortoise has that really long neck and really powerful front forelimbs to lift itself off the ground to reach for higher vegetation. Whereas something like a sulcata is built for more of a burrowing life. They have a shorter neck so that they can eat mostly off the ground. And really the same goes for radiated tortoises, but radiated tortoises are definitely more of a species that reaches than a sulcata, even though they are much, much smaller. So the tortoises here on the ground know that there is food. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna further secure this here for Mickey and uh, get the other ball on the ground for these tortoises to enjoy. Okay guys. <laughs> you guys have been patient enough. So these are our more ground dwellers. I mean, that's kind of silly to say because all tortoises live on the ground, but these tend to not reach as high as something like a giant Aldabra tortoise would. Go ahead, Dixie. Here come the radiateds. I'm sure the others around the room will start coming in. And right now, they're just gonna pick what's obviously easy to get for them, but they will really have to work for what's inside here. But, <laughs> fun fact, the radiated tortoises, which they're with their much smaller heads, are gonna have a lot easier of a time getting their heads inside this dog toy to pull the rest of the greens out. So Dixie, it looks like you're only gonna get what's uh, there. But look at this now. She sees an easier opportunity. Why is that? Because all tortoises are opportunistic feeders. So Mickey's coming on over. She's like, hey, this is a lot less hard to work for, so I'm gonna help myself. But when it's all gone, she's gonna have to go back to the hanging one. Go ahead, girl. See, look at her raising up. She's Get so tall. That a girl. So fox turtles are omnivorous, Otis is no exception, which means they eat animal matter, plant matter, fruit, you name it. So I've got some beautiful, B-E-A, beautiful papaya here. I don't know if Otis likes it. He likes a variety of other fruits, but, oh, look at that, nice piece that just came right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the seeds off of it, get the skin off of it so it's easy for him to chew, so it's easy for him to bite into. Let's just try long strips like this. There we go. 
One thing box turtles definitely do is they hunt. So they walk around on the forest floor and on meadows and they push the earth and debris aside and even go underneath pieces of driftwood or small pieces of wood, you know, little logs, and they will look for invertebrates. And they will also hunt for mushrooms. So this is a great way to stimulate him to want to hunt and to simulate a hunting experience. Now I know he loves, absolutely loves Missouri crocodilian chow. Uh, this stuff is cool to add to a, an otherwise varied diet. So I'm gonna put some of this in here. It's slightly moistened so he can easily bite into it. Um, in case he doesn't like the papaya, he should hopefully wanna go after the croc chow. That piece is still dry. Oh, there we go. Here. Okay. Let's see what he thinks. Here you go, buddy. Let's see what he does. Here Otis goes again with his insane charisma and intelligence. <laughs> He's more interested in us. I think what we need to do is walk away for a minute so he becomes focused on the ball and then we'll see what he does with it. So obviously I've overstuffed this. This little turtle cannot physically consume the amount of food that I put in this ball. So that's why it's important to always supervise them when you're doing something like this. Um, you don't want mold growing on old food or anything and that should go without saying. You gotta remove old stuff and get rid of it. And then you can redo this as many times as you really want to. Um, but also, because this ball has holes in it, and he starts to move with it once he's eaten the stuff that's hanging out of it and he wants to get to more, you don't want like a foot or something to get stuck in there and you're not there to supervise. So you just want to make sure that the animal's always safe and in a clean environment. And he's making work of this uh, papaya, but it'll be interesting to see if he does start to roll it as he tries to get more. Might work, it might not, but nonetheless, it's got his attention and he is really enjoying the food and he's also reaching for it, which I like to see. All right, we got a lot more beautiful papaya here, so all I'm gonna do is cut it in half. There we go. Look at all that. And now we've got plenty for our redfoot tortoises. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just holding the food out for them. This is a form of enrichment in itself. You're making the animals come over to you. You can change up areas so that the animals are not always eating in the exact same spot. You're making them reach for it. You know, redfoot tortoises are a fairly decent sized animal, so they do need to exercise. Come on. And this is a great time for you to really observe their behavior and health because let's face it, a lot of us just have to throw food down and walk away because we're so busy. But when you do that, you're not really getting a chance to see how the animals are behaving, what their feeding response is like. And the tortoises should be eager to eat, so long as you're of course not overfeeding them. But these tortoises are coming right over. They absolutely love papaya and they're working for it. All right, so we're getting a really good feeding response out of these guys and girls right now. And you know, one of the good things about giving them foods like this is that they're getting some hydration. And in the winter, I'm sure you guys can tell how dusty all of our tortoises look. Yes, we come in here with the hoses and we wet them down. We make sure that they get soaks and they drink water, but it's just an unnatural environment for them in here right now. So they do get dusty and this is an extra way to give them added hydration because obviously in the summer, they're getting plenty of, of that beneficial rain and humidity. So they really just soak all that up. Everybody's fine, everybody's healthy, but when you give them things like papayas, um, even romaine lettuces, in addition to all these other varied items, you're making sure that the animals are not only getting nutrition and those really essential things they need, but another essential thing they need is that hydration, which they are also going to get from their food. However, contrary to popular, extremely outdated belief, tortoises do not only get their water from the food they eat. That was once thought to be the case, and that led to a lot of pyramiding. And you can see some of these older redfoot tortoises are very py pyramided from outdated, inaccurate information but they need water in addition to their food. This is just an added way to get hydration into them. And they're clearly enjoying it. Look at this. 
They have really made good work of this first ball. They've gotten just about everything that was hanging out of it out and then some. But as I suspected, the radiated tortoises are having a little bit of an easier time because of their smaller heads. So pretty soon, we're hoping here Mickey's attention will be redirected back to the hanging ball here so she can continue to work for her food. And then later I can come back and restuff this ball for everybody else. But this is cool. This is really what I wanted to see. They are completely dedicated to working on this ball. Hey, where's my ball? It's remarkable that the way we have to work with this turtle is to remove ourselves from the situation because he gets so fixated on us, which is exactly what he's doing again. It's like almost instantly he forgot about the ball because we're back in the picture here. All right, next up, we're gonna make a pretty cool mash for some of our tortoises, other tortoises that are awake. And this is particularly some of the Greek tortoises, uh, leopard tortoises, more of those grassland weed or flower eating species. But we don't have any of that stuff at our disposal right now, for the most part. What we're gonna start off with is a base of romaine lettuce and also some spring mix and arugula. These mixes are actually very good as a base diet to add other things into. More recent studies, as the Tortoise Trust over in the UK has shown us, is that this stuff is actually safer to use than a lot of commercial diets, but we still are gonna use a little bit of commercial diet because some of these animals have come from rescue situations or import situations, and they really need to bulk up. And that's when some of these safer commercial diets really help bulk of those animals up faster and get them out of a fragile stage. So don't completely shy away from that stuff. In all these years that I've been doing this, I find them to be fairly good to use in moderation. So we've got some romaine there that's already shredded up, which is nice. I'm gonna shred up a little bit of arugula. And these are just some of the greens that you can use. The tortoises really love them, but if you don't mix them with something else, the tortoises can get completely hooked on them, which uh, that's not something you wanna deal with because then sometimes you have to go the starvation route which means you have to basically not offer the animal anything for prolonged periods to try to get them on something better for themselves. And if they're already compromised, well, need I say any more? Some more arugula here. And when you finally chop it up, the reason for that is so that the animals are getting mouthfuls of everything. Because don't underestimate them. They are very smart and they will pick out what they really want. But when you finally chop it and mix it all together and add that commercial stuff to it, and also some calcium powder, which we're gonna throw in, the animal has no way to really avoid that, which is, of course, a good thing. So there's our base, okay? Arugula and romaine, this time around, you can always change it up. There's so many different greens out there. Check out the tortoise table. That's a wonderful website to find out things that are safe and they'll even tell you if something is good in moderation. And here we go. Now we're gonna add a little bit of Missouri tortoise diet. This stuff is like candy to the animals in that they want it all the time. Once they get used to it, they really, really enjoy it. Should not be the only thing in their diet. You can offer it singly. But what I'm doing right now is mixing it with this other stuff to try to get the animals as much variety as possible and nutrition. So it's messy. What you do is you just get on in there. Mix it all up as much as possible so that everything is touching everything. Next, we're gonna use something that I've really come to enjoy using. This stuff right here doesn't look like much, does it? But it is. There are 60 different species of plant in this right here. And what they are are freshly pressed tortoise food, tortoise food cube. What these are are freshly pressed tortoise food cubes. Do you believe it? Made by Arcadia. And this stuff is great because it's dried out, a lot of natural fruit. <laughs> hard time here. This stuff is great because there's a lot of natural food items here, but a lot of times the tortoises will not eat this alone. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sprinkle this in here too. Get them even more of what they should be eating so it's not just that supermarket produce. In the summer, of course things are gonna be easier. We don't take care of our lawn here purposely, aside from cutting it. We make sure that we get all those beneficial wild weeds growing so we always have a constant natural food source for our tortoises. And then we also plant a lot of edibles. But until spring comes back, we've gotta do stuff like this for them. So, there we go, look at that. They can't avoid anything here really. So we're gonna add one more thing to this particular mash. RepCal, calcium powder. Again, something I use sparingly in the winter for calcium. This is highly beneficial, especially for the females because we are coming up on spring. So a lot of them are gonna start developing eggs and you want those eggshells to be nice and strong. But in the summer, all we do is throw out cuttlefish bone, which the tortoises can help themselves to instead of forcing calcium on them all the time, which is not good. And then they will even find discarded snail shells and eat those which is another source of natural calcium and something they would do in nature. So, here we go. I'm gonna mix this up one more time. And we're gonna go see who enjoys it. Uh, we have little girls, hence the uh, leftover party plates here. So we're getting festive. I'm just gonna put a little bit on each plate here. Make sure everybody is eating it, and we will then of course come back and make more. Got plenty of ingredients here to use. Now, if you look, I still have some ingredients right here that I haven't even used yet. So this is for the next batch, you know. I've got radicchio. This is another store-bought product that you can feed tortoises in moderation. We have more arugula. We have some blueberries here that's gonna be fed to the fruit eating species, but also mushrooms. And we're gonna cut these up and put them into a mix for our hingeback tortoises, because that's a pretty big staple in a hingeback tortoise's diet. Check it out, I was right. They have completely emptied the ball and Mickey is back at the one that hangs. All right, our mash was a success with the Greek tortoises. They're going nuts over it right now. The little Tunisian Greeks are coming out and enjoying it, and some of the other ones are too. And these are tortoises that have been recent acquisitions, which is why they're being so active right now during the winter months. And we need to really bulk them up. They need to get the calcium and all the nutrients from this amazing mix that we just met, made them. And I'm of course gonna change it up every time I do it. And then they will just get straight greens and flowers and weeds. And as soon as they go back outside, they'll be able to do all the foraging they need to in a natural manner. Manner. So now what we got to do is we're going to use these mushrooms, some romaine lettuce, some Missouri tortoise diet and calcium so that we can make a mash for our hingeback tortoises. So if you're wondering why I'm adding mushrooms to this, well, it's because hingeback tortoises of all different species, and they belong to the genus Conixus, happen to absolutely love mushrooms. It's a natural part of their diet in Africa and we're gonna add it to, to theirs right here in a captive management situation. Just gonna finely chop them, make them a mash just like we did for the other tortoises so that they get everything and not just their favorites. And what's interesting about this whole mushroom thing with Conexus tortoises, the hingebacks, is um, there's an interesting article where it was stated that it's believed these tortoises can break down chitin, which is found in mushrooms and also arthropods, which they also eat. These tortoises don't have a standard tortoise diet, if you will. They're a little bit more like redfoot tortoises or box turtles or even Asian species of turtle and tortoise like the uh, mountain tortoises that belong to the genus Minoria, where they eat all kinds of things that are growing on the forest floor and they will eat plenty of invertebrates. So believe it or not, our hingeback tortoises are capable of taking down earthworms just like Otis, the eastern box turtle would. So this time around, we're not doing earthworms. We're gonna add some mushrooms to their diet. All right, I think that's good enough. Throw that in. A little heart of romaine. Romaine 
historically is such a commonly used tortoise food. They all love it. Granted, they're getting a lot of water out of this, which of course want your tortoises to want, because if you think about outdated information, all those old care sheets and books used to suggest to us that we should keep our tortoises on rabbit pellets or aspen shavings and uh, be fed nothing but romaine and maybe some calcium powder. We now know that that is very far from how any of these species should be housed, but romaine is still a pretty good base to offer them. And there's also articles out there that suggest that romaine can help with parasite loads. All tortoises should carry a healthy load of parasites in their gut, but it's when those things become infestations that we have a problem. So Romaine can actually help that a little bit. Let's get that in there. Okay, mix it up. I feel like I'm doing my own cooking show right now. Isn't that beautiful? Now our Missouri tortoise diet. Calcium, mix it up real good so that there's a good shot that every mouthful has a little bit of everything in it. And now we are ready to feed our hingeback tortoise. So I'm going to use this plate to feed our adult Specs or Speaks hingebacks. And we're also going to give a little bit to Jabari, who is our. USA captive bred and hatched Bell's Hingeback tortoise that hatched here in 2022 and she's doing fantastic. All right, here we go. All right guys, hope you like it. Guys, this is Jack and Sally, who are our Galapagos tortoises. If you recall, we got them back in September 2021. They were sent to us by Jason Abels and John Heidecker, friends of ours at 3J's Tortoise Sanctuary. These two amazing, iconic tortoises were donated to us to grow up with our kids. And well, look at how big they're getting already. They were so small when we first got them and they've just been growing by leaps and bounds and we're of course not rushing it, but even though Jack and Sally are small right now, they are going to be as big and bigger than Mickey the Aldabra tortoise because the Galapagos tortoise is arguably considered the world's largest tortoise species. And when I say arguably, I say that because some people consider the Aldabra to be bigger. Really they're neck and neck hundreds and hundreds of pounds they will weigh one day. Right now, I am just starting to get them used to reaching for food because it is, like I said, extremely important for them to work for it. There you go, Sally, there you go. Jack's got a mouth full of grass or something there. Maybe he's not hungry right now. I say he, but we actually don't know the sex of either one of these tortoises yet. Chances are they are both female, but um, I don't know, we don't know yet, time will tell incredible, most famous tortoise species in the world. It's been an absolute joy to work with them. They have a wide, varied diet. Fruit though is just a treat for them. You don't wanna go nuts with the giant tortoises with their fruit, but it's great to use it almost as like a training mechanism. We're trying to get them to learn to reach for their food so that by the time they are the size of Mickey, they are very used to it. Cause you saw how easily Mickey was just like, yep, I'm gonna go for this. There you go. There you go. Of course, I can hang one of these in their enclosure, which I will do. So I hope some of these feeding tips helped you guys out. And yes, you can go to your local pet store and buy toys made for dogs like this and use them for your tortoises. Animal enrichment is crucial no matter what species it is you're dealing with, even a wild type species like a tortoise or turtle. Because remember, those animals are wild at heart no matter what. They are by no means domesticated but they sure do learn to associate us as a positive source for food. And it's just, it's so much fun interacting with them and working with them. 
Wouldn't you agree? Hey, listen, yet again, we've got another incredible t-shirt, hoodie, sweatshirt design available. And now our designs are available in youth sizes. So please check out the store. It's in the tabs at the top of this very channel. Spread the word. Your support means the world to us. And every dime goes right back into us being able to work with these animals and offer them what we can on a daily basis for the duration of their lives. So check out that design. It's got both Otis and Lakai as Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, challenging Otiszilla. It's worth it. Go check it out.